Hey, good morning everyone, or good afternoon, or whatever time you're tuning into our video blog for this week. Um, it's not Pastor Dave, he's on holidays at the moment, so I'll be sharing a little bit on, on my heart with regards to discipleship here today. So, um, yeah, I don't know about you guys, but I've been thoroughly enjoying uh, this series that we've been doing on Acts in our Sunday morning services at the moment. I mean, the Apostle Luke, he's just written an awesome book, um, inspired by the Lord, which just really captures the spread of the early church through the mission that they had, um, but also just the developing of disciples and leaders along the way. We just get really good insight into that, and it's just exciting to see things just expand and expand, and there's challenges that go along the way, of course, but um, just to see the expansion of the early church just in full swing is just awesome. From a big picture perspective, I, I really love the power that both mission and discipleship both have in their own rights. I mean, when we talk about mission, we're talking about reaching out to people though, to, who don't know Jesus, who haven't heard the gospel message, the good news. It's about spreading that, that word. Uh, in discipleship, we're, we're reaching in to each other and, and learning the ways of Jesus, the words of Jesus, what he did with his life. and. You know, asking the question, how can I be more like him um, in that ongoing relationship? But as great as they are in themselves, when you combine the two aspects of faith that we're talking about here, the two things that were commanded by the Great Commission when Jesus spoke to us in Matthew 28, verse 19 to 20, like there is this epic recipe for the extension of God's kingdom, for spiritual renewal, because when you're conscious of both reaching out to those who haven't heard the good news and when you're conscious of reaching in and just doing your best to become more and more like Jesus, there's this multiplication that really kicks off. Um, so I'm going to do a, a bit of maths for you, um, kind of. <laughs> um, if you chose to disciple four people, right? If you chose to disciple four people and you invested in their life and you, you led them towards... Jesus and imitating Jesus and becoming more and more like him. And then those same four people also invested in four people each, who then also invested in four people each. After just 10 generations of that happening, what you've actually done is stemming back to just one person, discipled a million people, just in 10 generations of people investing heavily into four people. I mean, that's an incredible opportunity. So discipleship, it's not just important to make sure that we're modeling Christ and that we're drawing closer to him. And that's what it is. But it's actually important to see the bigger picture, the, the factor that it can have in seeing people solidified and strengthened in the faith in huge numbers, which would, of course, also help the mission that we're on. The more numbers behind us in the army of God to actually go out and share the good news. It's amazing what happens when both mission and discipleship work together. Um, yeah, anything's possible um, with God on our side. So I just want to encourage you this week to ponder who doesn't know Jesus in your life that you can get alongside and reach out to, but also who does know Jesus in your life that you might be able to take under your wing and disciple and journey through life with maybe somebody who's a bit younger or someone who might not have as much life experience or um, may have a shorter journey in the faith so far. So who doesn't know Jesus that you can get alongside and who does know Jesus that you can take under their wing and begin a discipling relationship with? I'll leave that with you for you to ponder. Hope you guys have a great week and yeah, we'll see you next time. See ya!